Hi, I'm Rob Ryder, and this is the first in a series of videos I'm doing about scale fingerings for bass guitar players. I mostly want to just have a set online that anyone who's taking lessons from me can look up at any time, check out any scale that they may be studying, refresh their memory if they need to. If anyone else wants to look in, that's definitely fine with me. So let's get started with the first most basic and most common scale of all, the regular major scale. Major scale needs to start with what's called a whole step, a two fret distance. So we can start on the third fret of the E string here and go to the fifth. From the second to third note in the major scale should be a whole step too, so we can go from the fifth fret to the seventh. And then we need what's called a half step, just a one fret distance. So that'll be from the seventh fret to the eighth. The next three steps are whole steps, so we're going from fret number eight to number 10 fret 10 to fret 12, from the 12th on to the 14th, and then the very concluding piece to the octave is going to be a half step. So that's a whole step, a whole step, a half step, a whole step again, another whole step, one more whole step, and then a half step. And that is a major scale. It's a good fingering for seeing how the scale lays out on one string, and getting a sense of the structure of that scale, but for actually playing the scale on the bass, it's one of the worst, clumsiest, most difficult ways you could probably do it. So let's look at a better fingering. Let's start again here on the third fret of the E string, and we'll put the next note on the same string too, just two frets away. Our next note is going to be one fret back from where we started over on the next string, which in this case is the A. We just need one more fret to get the note after that, and then another two frets gets us our fifth scale note. The last three notes will sit on the next string, starting on the second fret, then on the fourth, and then on the fifth. So if we keep all our fingers on the same frets, cover a four fret span with our four fingers that we have, we'll have a middle finger to fourth finger, and then on the next string, first finger, second finger, and fourth, and on the last string, first, third, and fourth. If you'd rather have names for your fingers, middle to little finger, index to middle finger to little finger, and then index to ring finger to little finger. Whatever you like to call them, it's always that same fretboard pattern. Always makes you a major scale. One of the best things about this is that that pattern is transposable. So here we've been playing a G major scale, starting our pattern on a G. Walking up an octave, maybe walking back down. But if I wanted to play a different major scale, all I need to do is find the root note for that scale. Say we wanted to play a D major scale, I'll find a D, and I'll follow that exact same fretboard pattern, cover four frets with my left hand, and play middle finger to little finger, over to the next string, index finger, middle finger, and little finger, and then on the last string, index finger, ring finger, and there's that little finger on the octave, so there's a D major scale. Play another major scale, exact same pattern. Say instead of D, we wanted to play an E major scale. I'm just going to find an E and follow that same left hand fingering pattern. And we got it. You don't even really have to know that the E major scale has four sharps, and you don't have to know that the note content is E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, and E. Long term, it's good to know that, but if you need the scale right away, find the root note, follow that fretboard pattern, and there you are, done. I think our next video will probably be about the natural minor scale. See you then.